Well, an estimated 1% of Africans are blind, many from diseases that went untreated, causing distress and hardship to millions of people. 5% of the world's blind children live on the continent of Africa. Joining me in the studio are Dr. Andrew Bastaris and Stuart Gordon, uh, Jordan, co-founders of a wonderful practical invention that could help prevent blindness in Africa and all over the world. It's called Peak the Portable Eye Examination Kit. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us um, for that. First of all, um, how does this remarkable contraption work? And I, I, that's what you've got in your hand there, isn't it? Tell us how it works. What we've done is we've tried to redesign the eye clinic. So rather than having lots of bulky, expensive equipment, we've tried to condense it down into smartphone apps and built on hardware, making it possible to do high quality eye exams in very difficult locations. So sh show us how it works. Sure, so we've put on here the Peak Retina adapter. Um, with this adapter and the supporting software, what happens is I can point it towards Stuart's eye here, and we're getting an image inside of his eye. So if you look there, what I'm looking at there is his optic nerve. Mm -hmm. That's a direct extension of his brain. I'm also looking inside the retinal blood vessels, pick up conditions such as diabetes, macular degeneration, glaucoma. Uh, also be able to see the lens to look for conditions like cataract, the most common cause of blindness. So the, the idea is to have portable equipment that you can take into all kinds of places and be able to carry out examinations quickly to detect and prevent blindness. Yeah, exactly. How did you come up with this idea? Hmm. Um, well, I was uh, working in Kenya from 2012 running a large study where we were taking lots of expensive equipment to places to try and determine why people were going blind and what could be done. Um, it was a logistical nightmare because most places had no roads or, or no electricity supply. And so that's when I met up with uh, my co-founder Stuart and also the team in Scotland, Ian and Mario, to develop software and hardware which would allow us to reach those who are most in need. The people that tend to be beyond the end of the roads are the, the, the most at-risk group of being blind. And, and clearly you were excited enough about this to, to get involved in it. Yeah, so I moved out to Kenya with Andrew and for most of the last two years we've been working out there testing and developing this further uh, and now we're at the point where we're ready to scale up so we're asking the public to help us out by getting on board with our crowdfunding campaign at supportpeak.com uh, and yeah we hope to be able to start shipping this technology to healthcare workers around the world uh, to really change the way eye care is delivered uh, in next year. How much is this, does this cost? Well, traditional eye equipment. Uh, well, so, yeah, I suppose you'd compare the yeah. two. I mean, so um, a, a standard retinal camera might be in the region of twenty to fifty thousand pounds. An ophthalmoscope, which is a device which allows you to see inside the eye, can be anywhere between ten to a thousand pounds. Whereas we're we're asking people to pledge sixty pounds in our campaign to to develop this tool. No, but after you've developed it and people want to buy it, how much is it going to cost them? So we're going to have a split pricing model. So uh, for private customers in countries like the UK and Australia, uh, it will still be at that £60 level or maybe a bit above. But for NGOs and direct to uh, health organisations in low income settings, we'll be working at a, a much lower price point to uh, try and get the technology out there. Well, that's extraordinary. Not only is it innovative, it's relatively cheap. Yeah, that's, that's the plan. I mean, I would have thought that this is the sort of thing that African governments would embrace and, and you know, have budgets and so on for, because, I mean, this is transforming, you know, a, a potential problem, um, and also it's, it's affordable. Yeah, and we, we've had excellent support, including, the, you know, the Ministry of Health in Kenya, um, for example, that really supported the work that we did there, and where we hope that the, the funds of the government support will go into is actually treating patients, because as great as technology is at detecting patients, it's not going to provide the treatment. And the key here is connecting people who can provide treatment with those who need it most. Are, are there any other practical benefits to having this beyond um, helping people with their sight? I think the key is it's, it's people here like that are being shown in the video in the background who would normally not be found. Um, and being able to get to a location where you have people who are silently going blind and it often has such an impact on not just them as an individual but their community. You see children not in school um, because they have to look after a parent or a grandparent who's blind. That child loses out on an education. If you can give someone their sight back it can also mean that child has the opportunity to go to school. And are there conditions, I mean specific eye conditions that are unique to Africa or are more prevalent in Africa? 
there are conditions that are more prevalent, but the main reason that they're more prevalent is usually because there isn't the access to the basic eye care. So for both Stu and I, we're both very short-sighted. Um, had we been born in a context where we couldn't access glasses, we'd both be visually impaired. Um, so the, the biggest key is getting access. Although there are certain diseases such as trachoma, an infectious disease of the eye, which is more prevalent in Africa, the most common causes are those which we all go blind from everywhere in the world. And you're essentially holding those trials in Kenya for the moment. We've been trialling in a variety of countries. So Kenya, um, we're out in Mali in the summer. And the first national rollout will hopefully be in Botswana over the next few years. I mean, how challenging was it to develop this? I mean, and, and, and how accurate would you say that it is as a diagnostic tool compared to other, some of the other bigger equipment that you're talking about? Mm. It's going to vary by condition, but we've been running very specific trials like that and have more planned to establish that. But the data that we've got back from our first 2,000 patient trial in Kenya uh, shows a very positive correlation between the desktop retinal camera and our adapter. Right. And, and so this is clearly something that, I mean, is, is going to make a huge difference, particularly to remote communities in Africa, where it's very difficult for them to get to a proper, uh, I suspect most people will still go to, you know, to a hospital and so on. But I mean, this is particularly relevant for people who are in remote communities, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, exactly. We're not replacing the ophthalmologist in the hospital. We're just enabling them to reach a bit further. So with an untrained uh, healthcare worker, uh, they can go out into the community and find the patients to bring them back to the hospital and get them the treatment they need. Now, one of the things we find in Africa, I mean, you've got it with Ebola, you've got it with the polio vaccine, you've got it with a lot of other things, is that people are very wary of people like you turning up with some contraption and saying, you know, people are going to say, oh, my God, he's going to make me blind. I mean, have you sort of encountered that? Yeah, and, and those are the kind of things that we, we wanted to find out on the ground what the actual situation was. So, you know, the entire team in Kenya really taught us more than we taught them. Um, we, we planned studies to find out how did both the healthcare workers find this as a test, but also how did the patients find it. And, and some of the things to our surprise were that patients would actually come out asking to be tested because it was on a phone. They weren't intimidated by the fact that it was something they were familiar with, whereas had we turned up with some big contraption uh, requiring a petrol powered generator, there tends to be more fear associated with those kind of devices. Yeah, but when you say on a phone, is it an app that's on a phone or, or is it just built to look like a phone? Oh no, it is, a, it is actually a phone and we have various apps that run to test the different visual functions, how well you see in the distance, how well you see in the periphery. Um, and then it's the adapter that will clip onto any smartphone pretty much uh, and give you a good look at the back of the eye. So is it something that somebody, that just a lay person can have or does it require some sort of, with some sort of, somebody with some sort of expertise to be able to obviously take a look at it and, and you know, determine whether or not you've got a problem? Yeah, so it's designed for use within the healthcare system, but the idea is that the training requirement is very low. So, I mean, we've tested it with, you know, in the hands of ophthalmologists, nurses, and even people just fresh out of school. And very quickly, they're able to perform high-quality eye examinations without, without much outside assistance. Now, you talked about crowdfunding. How's that going? It's going pretty well. Today is day one of the campaign, um, and we're up to £20,000, I think, the last time I looked. So, yeah, supportpeak.com. Um, hopefully, we can get over our £70,000 target uh, in the not-too-distant future. Well, that's not a lot of money, is it? I mean, you should pick that up in a, in a breeze. Well, you can uh, log in and donate <laughs> if you choose, yeah. And, Thank and you. In, in, in all seriousness, we've had generous offers for, for support to, to make this a reality, but it, it often comes with strings attached. And yeah, so, I was, was going to say investors must be interested in this. Yeah, and, and for us, we're, you know, we're, we're invested in people and we really want to see this benefit people who need it most. Um, so for us to keep a close focus on our social mission, that's why we've chosen to go down the crowdfunding route to, to ensure we can keep the cost low and, and keep our our mission aligned with what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, because of course investors will want to make a profit out of it. Exactly. We're about maximising impact, not maximising profit. Well, that's a very noble cause and, and I do hope that this, I mean, I'm sure you're going to get the money anyway. I mean, any, any reasonable person would donate. I, I shall certainly go to your website. Well, how do you donate if you need to? It's very easy. Just go on to supportpeak.com and it's... Supportpeak.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's on the screen right now. Listen, I have to say thank you very much indeed, not only for this I invention, but for coming in. And I hope that it all goes, goes extremely well. Dr. Andrew Bastaurus and Stuart Jordan, co-founders of that wonderful practical invention that could help prevent blindness in Africa and all over the world. It's called Peak, the Portable Eye Examination Kit. Thank you to both of you for coming in. And that is your Africa wrap for tonight, Wednesday, 26 November.